Good advice by Dan. Good, you know. Good evening, good evening, good evening. We're going to call this meeting to order being 7 p.m. Uh, our agenda primarily is going to be centered, as you all know, and the reason why you're here, and I appreciate you all coming out, uh, is the FY210 budget kickoff meeting. And as most of you folks already know, uh, this whole process was really started way back in September, but we kept trying to get meetings scheduled in November, and every time we turned around, something was changing. Uh, so here we are, and that, that's great. Uh, as far as the agenda today is concerned, it is the kickoff meeting. We'll quickly go through this, and Mr. O'Connor and Mr. Kasanovich will make uh, presentations. Then we're just going to go in the normal uh, meeting of minutes, transfers, and miscellaneous discussions. There isn't going to be a great discussion on the Finance Committee's part as far as the budget is concerned because we, like you, are seeing this thing for the very first time. We're not going to talk about all the news that's out there. You've all heard it. And right now, it's not good news. But we've been down the road before, we've recovered, and we'll just work out fine. Okay, with that being said, um, <clears throat> you have your Town of Auburn FY2010 budget kickoff booklet. I'm just going to quickly run down uh, that for some folks, apparently, who are running into questions on some of the procedures. Very briefly, the very first page, of course, is your table of contents. The forms are all in there. You should be very familiar with the forms. The payroll form does, there is an instruction sheet in there. It does talk about annual pays being computed on a 52.2 week. Uh, the important thing, obviously, in, in doing that is if there is any absolute ne necessity of filling an open position, then you have to document it very, very uh, intently. Uh, as far as the table of contents, as I said, this process began according to this timeline back on September 4th, and the capital improvement planning has gone on. And that has uh, got us down through the end of November. As far as the capital improvement plan, um, as we all know, you review what you've done previously years 210 through 213, and then any new happenings that you see down the road that's going to take place in um, 2014, that's what you'll be working on. But take a very careful look at uh, your 210 and your 211s. And if there's, uh, obviously, if we've got leases, if we've got obligations, those are, all, those are all set and they're going to be met. If you have new equipment, replacement equipment coming on board, um, look at it pretty hard. Uh, Mr. O'Connor, I'm sure, has gone through with this, so you probably have already gone through with this, but for the folks out there that uh, don't realize all the work you folks do in putting together budgets and know what's happening. Uh, here we are on December 3rd now, and this is our, our get-together and going over the, this, this process. Uh, just to highlight the dates, all of these dates are spelled out very clearly in our, our, our charter, and all the dates are being being met. The, the key dates, of course, is uh, getting your budgets put together, getting your budgets put together, getting them in, uh, in uh, let's see, uh, I think it's early January, and uh, then the town administrator will, will be going through the whole process with you folks, one by one. I'd like to just comment briefly because folks sometimes wonder about it. In, in, the, in the budget book, 
and, and, and on the forms that are in there. And I, I guess I'll just take a look at that. There is a column which has the department request. It, it, I'm sure it's in there. You're sitting down with the town administrator and town accountants and reviewing all of these, and they're trying to put together what they think is going to help you meet the service needs. And uh, be prepared to make a, a recommendation to the, to the board, to the select board, on the material that you're furnishing them. But that department requests, if, if it's your insistence that it stays in there, even if town administrator and yourself don't have a meeting of the minds and he basically said, this is all we can recommend, leave that in there because we're going to take a look at it also. Because the finance committee is preparing a budget based on the recommendations made by the board and the town administrator to be recommend, recommendations to the town meeting. So there's three columns there. You've got your department request column, recommended town administration, recommended finance committee. So there, there really are two, there are two separate processes in that as far, well, three actually. You're the important one. And, and then the folks that look at it to try to bring it to town meeting was a balanced budget to town meeting. Okay. Um, anyhow, the Finance Committee will get directly involved with any and all departments during the uh, end of uh, February through all through March and April. We will specifically invite certain departments based on what we're seeing and what we would like to get more information about. Anyone, whomever you are, whatever department you represent, can just contact Sharon and just let her know that you want to come before the Finance Committee. And that would also be before the Select Board if, if you wanted to take your uh, your message to the select board. And then we wrap this all up in the annual meeting. This year is May, May 7th. So that, I hope, without beating it to death, is, is the, uh, uh, the, the budget timeline. All the forms are in here. They're all self-explanatory. If anyone has any, any, any problems with them, uh, you, we will help you through. They'll, uh, town administration, town accountant, or whom I'm. Okay. The next part of the budget uh, on, on this packet is the recommended revenue and uh, budgets. Now that's based on a lot of unknowns. First of all, we're projecting off of projections on both the revenue side and the expense side. By that, you're sim we're simply saying that you have an FY209 projection. Well, December 31st is, is the first six months of FY209. So we take a look at actual numbers as best we can through December 31st, and then we project out the next six months and see how that uh, works against um, FY210. FY210 right now is projected based on what we know and primarily uh, what's happening in 209 as, as we can see it at this particular moment in time. So I guess with that being said, um, right now I, I want to turn the meeting over to uh, Mr. Mr. O'Connor and Mr. Kasanovich. Uh, for the presentation and explanation of these numbers that you have uh, before you, starting with the revenues through. Mr. O'Connor, if you will. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to reiterate what you happened to say about the projections. The document you have before you tonight is a compilation of what we feel are solid projections for revenue at this particular point. As you look at the timeline, the budget will be going into the Board of Selectmen on February 2nd, which will coincide roughly with the submission of House 1. 
So it is only then that we'll have a, a better snapshot of what the state or the state administration is recommending in their budget. So the projections that we're using now to build this document will be needed in the next six weeks as we go through the hearings with the individual departments. But I, I, I just want to emphasize, as you did, that it is a projection based upon a projection. Secondly, there is a relation to 09 in the sense that the state came out with a projection in September of a billion four shortfall in 09. And con consequently, there's no question that that's going to have an effect as we prepare to hear the, o or the 10 uh, state aid numbers at the end of January. Just coming here tonight, I heard that the revenue uh, for the month of November, as received by the state, the DOR issued a press release, was off compared to what ANF had projected for revenue in the month of November. So nine and, and ten have a relationship. One is going to give us a, a better glimpse as to what the other one's going to look like. So in this document, you can see that we have used a 10 percent reduction in state aid. Some communities may use a 15 percent, some may use a 5 percent. I think this is a conservative, uh, appropriate, uh, pragmatic projection. May it be modified as time goes on, as you well know, that may well happen and hopefully to the benefit of the budget. The last point I want to make is that at a meeting of the Board of Selectmen 10 days ago, we, the administration, received a vote from the board uh, that there be no levy increase. So that would be a reduction of approximately 737000 uh, in addition to that projected 10 percent loss in state aid. So combined, we will be um, starting our 10 process with a projected 2.2 a million dollar deficit. Ed has a PowerPoint that will um, illuminate all of those numbers and give you, the, give you the backup that supports those numbers. But that is the challenge that we have, or the administration has, the next six weeks in order to meet this timeline and get it into the board for February 2nd and consequently to this body shortly thereafter. Uh, Charlie, just just one question. I've, I've heard, and I don't, I haven't heard it loud and clear from anyone. But I thought I heard that they they suggest that there's a possibility that there could possibly be some state uh, revenue, state aid cuts from the old nine. Well, uh, we had a, a conference call, I think, in late September with the Lieutenant Governor, and there was a number of Central Mass communities, and that question came up. Might there be a request for what's called expanded 9C powers by the administration, state administration? And at that point, it was not a question on the table. It was off the table. It was not on the Governor's agenda. Um, and. Uh, that would require action by the legislature. Okay. He would he would have to go into the legislature and get that vote. Mm -hmm. We've been in touch with Representative Frost and Senator Augustus. There's no talk of that happening by the okay. governor. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said to a reporter the other day, we can't speak for the state government. But my my guess is, or my um, my feeling is, and we've shared this <coughs> at department head meetings, that at the end of their second quarter, which as you said is three weeks from now, that will give them a snapshot of the first half of fiscal year nine. And um, is it conceivable that they might adjust what they had projected at the end of September? And I think that we have to allow that possibility to happen. Sure. Thank you. <coughs> Ed. Good evening, everyone. Um, before I get started, I'd just like to start off by saying <clears throat> that this projection is real. Um, 
and is very concerning to me. Um, quite honestly, before I get into the details, um, we've been down this road before, but not to the extent that we have painted this picture tonight. Back in 2004, we did lose state aid to the extent of about $1.2 million, or 18% reduction in total state aid. Now, you put that up against what we're projecting this year at 10%, and you say, okay, well, we got through it in 04, we'll get through it in, in 2010. There's a major difference here. Um, back when we lost 18.43%, um, the town of Auburn had some flexibility in redirecting about $1.1 million of money, tax levy money that we had historically appropriated for our CIP needs. Um, as a result of that state aid, that money was moved over and earmarked for general fund operating expenses. And the CIP needs subsequent to that have been funded via uh, bond proceeds or a bond issue. <coughs> Town administration always w wanted to move back to the point where the majority of the CIP needs were funded through tax levy, but never had the resources to do it. Number two, back in 03, we re retired about $180,000 worth of debt and interest. That was freed up. We were able to apply that to the general fund operating budget as well. So in total, we redirected from both uh, CIP and debt and interest, about $1.3 million, which filled that, filled that hole or that gap. We don't have that flexibility in 2010. Um, so where that money would come from um, can, can only come from the cutting services um, throughout, general, throughout town government. As Charlie had indicated via a uh, vote of the Board of Selectmen on 1124, uh, the budget we presented at that time increased, the budget deficit increased by 737,000, leaving an estimated budget deficit of approximately $2.2 .2 million. Uh, the funding sources that uh, make up on the expense side and the, re and the revenue side is as follows. <coughs> Uh, and I'll get into more detail for each component as the power presentation moves along. Uh, right now, we are uh, projecting total appropriations of $49,427,780.52. On the revenue side, our local receipts are $6,636,529. Cherry sheet revenue of $7,582,570. Total tax levy of $29,804,688.65. Uh, debt exclusion outside the levy limit to fund the high school of $1,550,838.46. Available funds of $1,642,000. For total revenue of $47,217,220.41, leaving an estimated budget deficit at this point of $2,210,560.11. The budget premise was built on using these projections and assumptions. Under the tax levy, we're estimating new growth at 400000 Yes, we did have $915,000 in 2009. And uh, that, that uh, new growth was mainly driven by a major warehouse that was built on um, Milgram Street, which yielded about 250000 to 300000 in new growth and the utility pole new growth, which we are required to hold in reserve about 114,000. So if you back that off from the 900, that leaves you roughly 500 and change. A uh, little greater than 400, I think everyone knows what the housing market is like. 
slow down the economy. Uh, I had discussions with the assessor's office. Uh, they're confident that uh, there will be a reduction. Um, so uh, we are comfortable with the 400,000 right now. We will monitor the building permits as time goes on to see if that uh, number can be modified in any way or if, if it sets any trend for uh, future permits or construction. Uh, no tax levy increase. That represents $737,617. That would leave uh, excess levy, if we don't charge the 2.5% of $837,617. Uh, that would mean that Auburn would be taxing approximately 97.27% of the levy. Um, and the total tax levy to be billed um, at that percentage would be $29,804,688. Uh, on the cherry sheet, the <coughs> revenue side, we're anticipating or, or projecting a 10% reduction in state aid. That's a loss over FY 2009 levels of $842,508. Uh, the cherry sheet represents currently 18.15% of the 2009 budget. Uh, we did make a presentation to the Board of Selectmen that compared other communities that had 08 values. That was Auburn's 08 value of the cherry sheet as a percentage was 16.55. So we did gain some ground in 09. As you know, Chapter 70 did grow, even though we were level funded on the, on the uh, Lottery 8 side. Uh, with a 10% cut in 2010, the cherry sheet uh, revenue would represent 15.81% of the total revenue. Um, and the 2010 at the 10% cut would mean a distribution of $7,582,570. Uh, revenue via local receipts, uh, we level funded all local receipts, receipts except for the following. A motor vehicle excise reduction by $150,000. Um, when I put the PowerPoint presentation to get, uh, together, um, it was estimated that sales were off by 35% nationally. There was an article in today's TNG the business section uh, reported by the Associated Press that six of the largest auto sales um, manufacturers in the country have reported a decline in sales over last year by the following amounts. Ford is 31% lower than it was last year at this time. Honda, 32%. Toyota, 34%. GM, 41%. Nissan, down 42%. Chrysler, down 47%. So not only will this have an impact on our motor vehicle excise locally, but it's going to have an impact at the state level because they won't be getting the sales tax on those sales that they may have been anticipating uh, when they put their budget together. Ed, could I just ask a question on that? Since that's the biggest line in this local receipts, uh, I think we were all surprised of the large jump in 208. And we had projected 25. What does that look to you right now, as far as 209 is concerned? Um, 209, the first commitment hasn't even come out yet. That will come out in February. That will oh. set the tone for okay. expected revenue okay. uh, for the year. I can tell you in 08, we were well over our estimated amount because commitments two, three, and four normally recorded uh, before the end of the fiscal year were um, committed I think commitment two was committed midway through June. So part of two, three, and four all were recognized in fiscal 08. If you back those off, we would have been close to our projected amounts when we put the budget together. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, we're expecting a decline in investment income. Um, we know the rates are down. Uh, we're currently getting a return of about 2 to 3 percent. Um, well, actually, we would, our investments are down by 2 to 3 percent over what the yield was last year. We were getting a return close to 5 percent last year. We're getting about 2.5 percent currently. There's an expectation due to the economic uncertainty and conditions nationally that those rates are going to go down even further. So we may have to come back with a revised investment income amount uh, as, as things play out over the next six months. Yeah, our current rate of return is, um, is roughly 1 to 2.49%, depending on the uh, investment instrument that is, is being um, um, invested by the town treasurer. And that's going to and that's going to vary based upon liquidity and uh, length of investment. So that's why there's a, there's a variance there. Mm -hmm. On the local receipt side, this is just takes a snapshot of the previous slide. As you can see, motor vehicle excise is down 150,000. Everything else is level funded, except for um, investment income down 75,000. Um, one area of concern would be license and permits. If the activity for construction, housing, uh, rehabs is not there, uh, you're going to see a decline in that area as well. But it's too early to, to gauge how, how that's going to translate in 2010. On the, avail on the revenue side, with regards to available funds, we level funded everything once again. Uh, except for free cash, we have a certification of 1174000 already been certified by DOR. That's free cash as it relates to fiscal 2008, which we can use in 2009. We're using $400,000 of that. Um, it wouldn't be fiscally responsible to appropriate the full amount to be used in our operating budgets. Given the fact that we know things are getting tighter, uh, that free cash is not going to be um, certified to that extent in future years. If we should appropriate that full amount of money and next year free cash comes in much lower, we have to make up that difference somehow. We know the revenue is not going to be there. Uh, so that's, that would just equate to further cuts in, in, in um, governmental services. Um, although the balance could be used either for one-time appropriation, it could be put in stabilization uh, for uh, times when money is truly needed. Um, so um, the spread between the 400 and the 1.1 can be used for other sources. Um, we're expecting a 5,000 reduction in the sale of real estate and town property. Uh, we cleaned out that account when we went to town meeting in the fall. Um, we only get money when there's a, a sale of property via an auction of, for, of foreclosed property here in town. Um, to date, there's nothing in the account, so we may have to come back and visit that. Uh, $10,000 reduction in our return on investment for our CIP trust is we as I indicated earlier, there's an expectation that uh, interest rates are, are falling. Uh, the return on our investments, whether it be pension, whether it be CIP trust, is going to diminish as a result of that declining interest rate. Um, we're expecting roughly a $7,000 reduction. We appropriated that this year from the uh, trash bag overflow. Uh, that's used as an offset to our solid waste expense. Uh, there may be some money available um, in the spring. We will continue to monitor, monitor that account as well. There aren't big dollars in that account, but certainly every little bit helps. Uh, so here's a snapshot of all the... Ed, Ed May, just on, on the uh, packet chalk lease and the CIP trust, the monies that we used to collect up there went into the CIP trust, correct? Well, and I just read something in the paper now about moving this. I mean, it, we've been 
stuck on hold since 2006, I think, in that whole process. They were talking about moving this legal action someplace else. What, what's, the, what's the status on that? On the on the packet jog situation, still so. in litigation, so I we cannot get into the details. Well, I don't want. Well, okay. And and, be, well, and because we're in litigation, I can tell you right now that we. Don't I'm have, just asking well, what was already in the newspaper. What does that mean to the town of Orbit? That shouldn't be a secret. And I, I did cut the article out. I don't have it out with me. We were trying to move it from one court to another court or something. Mr. Chairman, I think what you're referring to is the town filed a motion for change of venue to have it taken out of yeah, the right. court in Cambridge yeah. and brought to Worcester. That was long since denied by the court. Oh, that was denied already. Yeah. Okay. Long right. since denied. That's all I was asking, what the status was of, of that. Let, let me just ask one other thing. Uh, Ed uh, interrupted you, but just to Charlie. We had uh, the appropriated, not we, the town meeting appropriated $50,000 for that uh, dilapidated barn up there for safety reasons. We we're going to fix it and all that stuff. And I, and I realize we can't do anything now while this is going on. Is there any way the town meeting can free up that $50,000? That 50000 mm -hmm. does apply to Ed's first answer. That would be part of the negotiations oh, okay. right now. Okay. All right. Thank you. <coughs> um, as you can see, this is the revenue side of the ledger. Uh, these are the components we just went over. Uh, here's a detailed itemization of each one of those line items. On the expense side, this budget model before you tonight level funds all budgets. It increases town and school wages by an average of 2.5%, which is about $624,000. It budgets the town's current debt and interest obligation as recognized today. It meets the town's contractual obligations for solid waste collection and disposal. It level funds Bay Path assessment. Now, last year we were fortunate enough to have a reduction in that line item what the impact is going to be for 2010, we don't know. But this model level funds that. Uh, it raises $1.5 million outside the levy limit for the debt and interest on a new Auburn High School. It increases group health insurance by 12%, or $687,000. It increases our retirement assessment by 22, uh, 22%, or $294,000. Now, we know, given the performance of many investments that, quite honestly, have dropped over the past six months, given the uh, economic decline, not only locally but nationally, uh, that 22 percent was communicated to us back a year ago when, we, when Worcester Regional Retirement System went to PEREC. They recomputed our assessment based upon the amount of money that went to PEREC and an actuarial study that is required every three years. The information we got at that time was ex you can expect roughly a 22% increase for the next three years. Whether or not that will hold true given the performance of the investments in the portfolio that PEREC invested is unknown at this time. Now, there may be some type of legislation filed that would extend our current funding um, mechanism. We're required to fund our unfunded liability over a 28 year period. There may be a move afoot to extend that to 40 years or something greater than 28 years to soften the assessments on, on the communities that are part of the. Um, part of that retirement plan. Um, the model increases Medicare by 3%, or roughly $10,000. We normally increase it by the amount of the COLAs that are given. That would be 2.5%. Um, but when you get new employees in, uh, we have to cover roughly 1.45% of that. 
Um, and there are individuals that are going out that may not be Medicare eligible, so we don't have to contribute for those. So it's always going to be normally higher than the, the amount of the COLA because we're new eligible individuals are coming in when non-eligible are going out. So on the revenue side, we're anticipating projecting $47,217,220.41 on the expense side, a higher uh, of uh, an amount of $49,727,780.52 on a projected budget deficit of $2,210,560.11 on Now, we know this number is going to change, whether it changes for the good, whether it's favorable for Auburn, or it's detrimental to Auburn, we don't know at this time. Certain factors can, can drastically change this projection. Um, quite honestly, these are projections, these are assumptions made based upon a snapshot that we're taking today. Um, all municipalities, present a budget in this fashion. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts present, presents a budget using these projections as well. And as you know, uh, it's given due diligence by the House, by the Senate, by the Conference Committee, and a budget is finally enacted. There are always corrections after a budget has been enacted. In the state's case, they need to adjust their budget by $1.4 billion after the budget got total scrutiny by those legislative bodies, as well as the executive branch. Municipalities operate the same way. We know there are gonna be corrections before the annual, and there are gonna be corrections after the annual. Um, and the corrections after the annual are based upon actual receipts received as of June 30th, which are not known when the budget goes to town meeting in May, and the final state numbers. Those historically in the last five years have come out after town meeting has taken action in May. So there's always going to be an adjustment to the budget. We've been lucky enough where it's been up and not down, but there will be times when corrections will have to be made to reduce the budget instead of increasing the budget. Uh, so whether Alan Greenspan puts the budget together, the state puts the budget together, there are always going to be corrections after the fact. <coughs> Um, and this 2.2 could be impacted by a major federal stimulus package that the federal government is talking about. Uh, to what extent, we don't know. Uh, will that re-energize the economy? Um, all those things are uncertain. Uh, but certainly, we totally understand that this is a, a, a number as it stands today. It will change. Um, based upon a number of criteria, and we will be modifying that and informing the Finance Committee of these changes as they're made known to us. Uh, so that's the presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions um, at this time. Mr. Murray. Mr. Chairman, through you to Charlie Ed. Have we looked at uh, an opportunity to uh, save on potential borrowing with some influx? And the money available, I know recently rates just dropped this, I at least learned. Is that part of your normal process to, to this point? Or As it applies to borrowing, we review that on an annual basis. Uh, we look at refunding issues, whether we can get a lower rate, whether the bonds are callable or not. Um, we believe money is hard to borrow today. I uh, just had a conversation with Lester. They just went out to market. They only had one bidder. Um, so, uh, we believe in a, in a difficult year, we would probably advocate for going out for a ban. Uh, the rates are pretty low right now. Uh, we would be able to defer a debt payment. Quite honestly, how this budget impacts capital at this point is unknown. We're going to have to do a total review of the capital needs to see how it impacts the bottom line of $2.2 .2 Thank you. 
Yes, Mr. Chairman, you got a comment, Mr. Thunder. Mr. Chairman, in, in response to Chris's question, let me also say this vote or, or this news relative to $700,000 is, is 10 days old with, uh, with uh, Thanksgiving in between. We will be going back to the BOS at the next meeting, Monday night, to the select board and ask for guidance and uh, priorities that we can use as benchmarks as we go through the six weeks worth of um, budget hearings with the department heads uh, because we can't accommodate that without some prioritization. I, I have a question for you. <laughs> um, I guess what I'm concerned about with uh, both the free cash monies and Prop 2.5 monies, we're talking about f a level funded here, and that absolutely means no question that it's going to affect our salary accounts. Absolutely no question, because our, our salary, you know, makes up over 85 percent of our total total budget. We have, if I and I, I'm posing this as a question. I believe it's still still outstanding um, contract negotiations going on with police dispatchers, police officers, police sergeants and lieutenants, call firefighters. Uh, full-time firefighters, uh, I think that's it. The sewer department has been set and high, p highway parks and cemetery has been set. We're not, we built in a little bit in 209. We don't build something in there. These contracts do get negotiated, and I know, we keep, I, I know we're not going to talk about them. I, I'm just alerting everybody that this could be a major problem. Mr. Chairman, yep. as you recall, we set money aside to meet those contracts, uh, to meet a percentage for those contracts that have not been settled yet. Right. If you look at the salary reserve account, it was increased to make a, um, make a commitment to those contracts that are currently before the Board of Select. But that was for one year. Now we've got two years. Right. But on top of that, and that remained within the salary account. We didn't reduce that. So that is going to trickle down to the various departments. In conjunction with that, if you look at where the appropriations are, there's a value of $624,000, which provides for 2.5% for all wages throughout town. So there is an amount there, even for those contracts that are not settled. Okay, I'll talk you, with you. Are you asking, do we still have a prior year exposure that we, that we don't have funded? Well, that's basically what I'm saying. Right. I, my figure, and I'll, I, I, I'll be perfectly honest, I don't quite understand what you said. I'll have to sit down with you. I don't want to tie up all these folks. Well, let, me, let me see if I can simplify it a little more. If you look at the... If you look at where the departmental budgets are, if you look under the salary reserve, if we had reduced that to last year's level of $40,000, then, and we left it as is, then the obligation is there for the current fiscal year. The $624,000 provides for the additional increase as a result of What's the- What's $624,000, Ed? What am I missing here? We, we had set 355, 388 aside for FY209, and now we've still got 355, 388 for FY10, and we haven't settled. Mr. Chairman, if you go to the second page uh, where employee benefits is. Employee benefits, okay. Mm -hmm. And you keep going down, you go down about eight lines, you're going to see contractual wage increase, 2.5%, $624,000. Okay. Okay. I missed that one completely. Very good. All right. Um, let's see, did I have any other question on these at the moment? <coughs> That'll get into the detail when we start talking about why and the, the broad discussion we're having today. Any any uh, questions no. from anyone no. from the board? Any of you folks have any uh, general question, information, backup, 
I mean, follow up or anything? Okay. Well, if there aren't any questions, I'm, I'm going to conclude by simply saying, where do we stand now? Well, the, the burden, not the burden, the transfer of responsibility now is your court, court wacko, uh, you know, come back with you, working on your budgets and coming back. Um, the things I had in here, Eddie already talked about, the unknown possibilities, FY09, Mr. O'Connor addressed that, the, uh, the cuts in the um, state receipts, which we, uh, we know was, um, oh, let's see, 8425 been cut by, t by 10 percent. And, you know, everybody keeps talking about Chapter 70 numbers and government numbers. I look at the revenue, there's two parts of a revenue. You've got the education part and you've got general government part, two separate numbers. When you look at those particular numbers in last year's figures, the school was 5,987 and the government was 2,437. And as Ed mentioned, uh, the lottery fund from on the government side now has been level funded for two years. I mean, it was level funded last year, and, and we've got to level fund it again this year. So if you just looked at those particular numbers on the education <coughs> side, not Chapter 70, on the education side, you, you would be talking about a reduction of almost $600,000. And on the uh, government side, you'd be talking about a reduction of about 243, if that becomes a reality. But that's what we're dealing with right now as far as the numbers are concerned. The, fr the free cash question, uh, Eddie touched on that and answered it as best he can at this particular time. Uh, the Finance Committee, I'm sure, are going to be asking some questions as to why did this free cash flop around as much as it, it does because we went from 950 down to 347 up to a million, so there's answers for that. but. We'll get those, but Eddie did, did explain to you this is what has been, is the prop word certified? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and what what we're trying to do, looking a little bit ahead. Um, let's see, what have, whatever, what else have I got here? Well, I think that pretty much uh, covers it all. As I said, the important uh, players in the game right now, are each, each and every one of you as leaders of your unit, to determine uh, what obligations you absolutely have to meet to provide the services that uh, the citizens of the town of Auburn are sort of ex expecting will be happening. With that being said, unless there are any other questions, this part of the uh, meeting is over. We're going to move into just the normal um, discussion of minutes, transfers, and miscellaneous, miscellaneous items in the town budget. Thank you so very, mu very much for coming up. We appreciate it. And f Eddie's phone is uh, never busy. Just call us whenever you like. <laughs> okay. Um, well, fiddle through all this. Can we give them just a moment, clear a little background noise here? Yep. Oh, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Sure. Sure. Okay, we're going to, uh, as far as the tr uh, transfers, we got transfers from police, uh, highway, uh, police and highway. So if you'd hang around, we'd we'll appreciate it, should there be any questions. We're going to take a five-minute break right now so that the folks can uh, comfortably exit the building. Exit the building. Okay. We'll reconvene the meeting of the uh, Finance Committee. We have three transfers here. And uh, now we can take care of two of them. First one is uh, the... Budget, uh, the police department budget 211. 
They're requesting um, $7,000 to be transferred from the uh, patrolman salary account to health and wellness. Um, there was no reasons, reason given as far as the transfer is concerned. Our budget was 55000 so this is adding numbers to health and wellness. <coughs> I guess I'll ask a motion I'll, to I'll make, Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve, Mr. Chair. Okay. Second, and I guess, are there any, any discussion on this? Uh, do we expect that there'll be another transfer like this, or is, is this it? Do you anticipate more transfers similar to this? I, w I would hope not, but that uh, would be possible. Okay, thank you. Friday. Anything else? Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Thanks, Chief. Thank you, sir. Okay, the next one is the highway. Um, <coughs> this is a dep interdepartmental transfer request from miscellaneous supplies, which still has a balance of uh, $1,274. Request that $279.20 be transferred to traffic paint 5534. Um, and it says methods attached, and it says that uh, oh, there she is. The uh, this should cover all the uh, materials that it needed to finish the crosswalks. I guess my own. Well, is there a motion? A motion to approve, Mr. Chair. And a second. Second. Okay, for uh, for discussion. My question simply. And, and obviously, in hindsight, it's golden. Did you have any idea that this was going to cost about $6,000 to paint these sidewalks blue? Uh, to do all of them, the, the increase in the blue paint was a little bit more than what we anticipated. Plus, we had a few extra crosswalks that uh, were requested. We had two near the high school that were extra this year. Um, one up near Pack Jug Village, Pro probably a total of, I think there were seven extra, which certainly don't total 6000 but um, the blue we didn't expect to cost as much as it did. Okay, so I, I guess a follow-up to that was when you sat down to do this, what, what did you actually project out? You had a budget of 2500 then we, uh, that was all spent, then we transferred another 3000 and now we're transferring the remainder of it. When you sat down to decide to do this, did you have any idea that it was going to cost that much money? No, the white well, the white paint went up also. It twenty five hundred was not going to cover even if we didn't do blue this year. Um, all the paint increased. Mm -hmm. When we had the prices, it was the prior prices, and of course with fuel increases, they increased mm -hmm. all of the paint. Um, well, that I, un I that I understand, but. You know, when you look back at history in the last three or four years, you're, you're talking about a budget that never exceeded $2,500. 1980, 1752, 1994, 22 and now we come up with $5,779. I know it was a decision made, and you're taking it, you're keeping it within your department, but uh, turned out to be a lot. Uh, just out of curiosity, how often do you think you're going to, I noticed the one up on Barbara, uh, not Barbara, uh, South Street, I don't know what these kids do with their automobiles, but they're, they're burning rubber on those sidewalks like they're going out of style, and they're, they're almost all black now. They're black and blue. <laughs> well, we paint them once a year, but again, like I said, we bought every year someone adds a crosswalk. Uh, for instance, right now, I, I know they're looking to add crosswalk up on Oxford Street South, um, up by the car dealership, because the car dealership now has added, um, they bought another piece of land, they want to add a crosswalk there. So even though this year the car dealership will pay for that, next year we're responsible for picking that up. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, the high school, they added uh, two extra because they moved the entrances and they knew kids were going to be crossing over. So that was two extra this year. Um, like I said, this year, I think total we had seven extra added, not counting 
Um, if a new development goes in and last year uh, they were responsible for putting it in, you know, the town automatically gets it. So I, I'm not positive of the total extra from last year to this year. And then with the increase in paint, um, plus the increase, you know, with the blue, um, you know, certainly a lot more than what we projected. As far as doing this uh, oh, sure. in future years now, um, is this going to be an easier maintenance job where you're doing the whole thing in, in one streak rather than having white stripes going down? It is, except a lot of them we didn't do the white stripes going down. A lot of them it was just white going across, nothing in the middle. Oh, I see. Um, what we'll probably do next year is um, add up the budget and probably just have the main streets uh, anywhere near the schools. Um, and any of the main ones just be the blue, unless prices drop okay, significantly. We'll, we'll all be curious, have great curiosity in seeing what you put in your line budget for FY2010. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, is, is there any other inquiries? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you so much. Thank Thanks, you. Darlene. Have a good night. Darlene. Okay, and the last one, the last transfer is... Um, This is a reserve, a transfer from the reserve account uh, to special lit litigation of account 5309. The amount, amount requested is 31,027.92. Balance in the account is 7,894.8144. <coughs> I know the question had been raised previously that when we had any more of these things, we'd like a little bit more information on them. The reason in here says litigation relative to Lowe's and Diamond. Do we have any breakdown between the two? Mr. Chairman, if you'd like, I, I have no objection to holding this. And okay. we can either do an executive session or get your report. All right. The town. Yeah. If I could just say that sure. the town is the client, but the planning board is privy to that information. Okay. And uh, but we'd be happy to get to the breakdown: which one is low? How much is low? How much is uh, uh, diamond? That would be fine. Um, you were the guy that was asking for a little bit more detail and reports. Do you have any? I, I guess my only question, Mr. Chairman, is there any end in sight? Excuse me? Is there any end in sight with these? I'm certainly not going to speak for the planning board. Um, we don't have, if you don't have a scheduled meeting for December or for your next meeting, that might pose a problem for the planning board. All right, well, well, we'll, we'll look at the, the scheduling in a minute. I, I guess just in, in, because this was a newspaper article, this whole diamond situation is really getting big. Are we going to be involved, we, the town of Auburn, going to be involved at all in this latest episode that's out there on the floor between diamond and the, because every person in town, I think, was, as far as planning boards and other things, were, were named in that particular article, and they're, they're talking about, $2.8 million So, is, is the town going to be involved in that in any way? Or is that purely between um, the, the action? The action that I think you're speaking of, Mr. Chairman, is uh, Diamond versus uh, the residents. The yeah. Okay. And, um, you know, to what's in the Diamond's mind relative to involving the town later on, I don't want to speculate. Okay, so far you haven't heard anything from no. the planning board as far as this is concerned? Let, here's what I'd say. I, I, I don't want to speculate on what I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that the planning board would need action on this in order to maintain their counsel, to maintain their representation. Okay. And we'll get you a report as to the breakdown. And if you'd like, we could even have the planner come into executive session and do a Q&A in executive session. 
Okay, that sounds good. that's good. Yeah. So we uh, will answer. Right, and, and further to that, I, I think it was more a matter of a, it was actually a very poorly written article in terms of what exactly Diamond was doing into whom, and I think oh, that's yeah, the reason for the was. question to you, Charlie, but it, that, on this. So uh, they certainly weren't clear, and I get a lot of calls on that, too. So. It says on the appeal of the onerous conditions set by the planning board, and they got big quotes <laughs> beside us. Oh, right. God. You um, know. <laughs> Um, okay. We'll take, well, we oh, well, we, we, we're going to hold this. We, or? we had a motion to approve this. I guess we'd have to have a motion to rescind that and put it on hold. No, no, no. No? Uh, I don't believe we have. I don't think you have a motion. We don't have a motion There's on this motion. one yet. Oh, I thought we did. Nope. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Actually, I'll. I'll you said there was a, a time constraint on this. I'm concerned that there may be in order to maintain representation right. the attorneys should and be paid. where we don't have another meeting planned there in the are, short term. There are also, I just want to add, Mr. Hussey, that there are subcontractors paid for by the law firm that are expert witnesses that may not be included in this particular bill. So to hold that up could be injurious to the planning board's representation. Okay, I'll, I'll okay, recommend a motion, motion to approve, to approve. Mr. Okay. Chair. And it has been seconded. All in favor? Aye. No. Aye. 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 Okay. We got a bill. We have. We really have to pay it. Um, okay. Thanks, Charlie. Okay. So that takes care of our. Uh, so now we got minutes. Um, we have the Finance Committee minutes of November 107. This has been on hold several times. We do now <coughs> have uh, able to vote approval of these, if it's your wish. Motion uh, to approve, Mr. Chair. And a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, the four people listed Same. on the top is oh, uh, you, Jim. zero. Wow. Okay, that's approved. <laughs> and we have the minutes. This was interesting. I, I, um, we're, we're playing around with the kickoff for this meeting, and I picked up these minutes, and we started reading these minutes, and these were all on the FY209 budget. Um, anyhow, uh, they seem like they're in good order as for my reading, but uh, we have minutes of March 5th, 208. Mr. Chair, I believe we can take the... March 5th, March 13th, and 19th as one. I believe we have representation here. Make a motion okay. to do so. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And a motion to approve uh, the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Done. Okay. It's a nice job, Sharon. Now we have miscellaneous, and I asked. Uh, that it be put on because I, I had a number of items. And one is uh, this letter from the superintendent of schools. I've asked Sharon to each person get um, a copy of it. I have already gone on record simply by saying, explaining the process that we go through uh, I'm told that what they're looking for, well, the board has is going to is has has sent a letter to this. Not yet. Not yet. All right. So it's. I'd just like your opinion on this. I guess the, what they're looking for is an informal work group to discuss overall needs of the town and department needs as far as meeting service expectations. That's the way I understood it. Uh, I objected to this when they started talking about voting voting people to be uh, members of a committee and setting up budget timelines and all of that stuff. But it seems to me they wanted just an informal working group. And all I'm doing here is asking if, if anyone uh, feels as though they would like to sit in on this committee. Um, I'll submit your name to Sharon. She could hold it. If, no one is interested in doing it, then uh, it's going to take time, and I would assume that these meetings are going to be taking place in the evenings, uh, so that means more out of your family schedules to sit in more meetings. Um, 
I'm sure that there's, there's pluses to it. Uh, I will just talk. I when I was a rookie, I'm not sure was Superintendent Newcomb or whether it was Superintendent Martin. We had a meeting like this, and I was sort of assigned to it as a representative of the finance committee, and uh, we didn't accomplish much. And then there was another one in the early '90s, and it, it really was the same thing. The school committee. Um, I think that, that she's trying to look beyond school committee, i.e. town and all of that, and saying, hey, look, we all got problems. But anyhow, it's an informal working group. If anyone wishes to set in on it, I'll submit your name. I will yeah, turn. I'd, I'd like to volunteer for it. Okay. So we will, um, you will be designated, and if they <laughs> set something up, or when they set something up. Uh, Mr. Chairman, one yeah. question. Is Go ahead. It's just more. Is it like a Q and A? I mean, uh, I mean, is Ke I'm, I'm asking because Kevin's volunteering at this point. But I mean, is it Kevin going to sort of sit there and take questions? Is that the intent? I, I don't know. All I all I have is this letter, oh. and you, you each get a copy of it. And uh, I objected to the committee part about it, voting people onto this committee. Um, I assume this would be a posted meeting that anybody could come to. Um, I know the school committee were talking about they should get it televised. I don't even know if that's going to be possible, but she was talking about dates now that have already gone by. So, right. and, well, and I know that the school uh, is already in the budget processing. They, they have their principals already mm -hmm. coming before them. So, right. I mean, hey, if. Uh, there's no goals in here, and, and, and I guess that's fine to the extent that the expectations may be a little lower coming out. At least I would hope there's some additional communication between some of the departments. Um, well, that was the other thing. You, they, they were talking about the board, finance committee, and the school committee, mm -hmm. and there was an expression, well, any department head that wanted to attend should be able to attend. And, and I know the superintendent uh, said that was fine with her, and the chairperson of the uh, school committee said it was fine with mm -hmm. them. So they're not trying to lock anybody out. And nope. if, if we can gain something, can that's I, great. Can I ask one more question? Go is ahead. it a weekly thing? Is it just I have no, I not I have, I have no idea. <laughs> I have is it no a, a one-time, I mean? I'll let you know. OK, I, I had no, a, I have no idea. No, we, we really don't. We, <laughs> we uh, don't. This, I, I, I didn't make any commitment at all from the standpoint of the Finance Committee until we had our meeting. And the first meeting, which was scheduled in November, got canceled, and, and mm -hmm. here we are. So we've, uh, we've accomplished that. I had free cash. Eddie's already uh -huh. talked about that one. Ambulance receipt reports. Uh, probably through you, I was going to ask the, the fire chief. We haven't received an annual... We haven't received a report from the fire chief since January of 08. Oh, wait, we received one? Well, this one says, well, this one is dated. We received January of 08. And we have never, okay. we haven't received anything. And uh, I, I had some questions on it, but until you can see the reports, so I, I would can, just... Can I ask a further question sure. on that? Yeah. Uh, Semi-related to Ed, uh, obviously you have a projection of ambulance receipts for 10, is, and it was flat funded, obviously. Uh, no additional intelligence on that in terms of any uh, discussions with the chief? Uh, they're taking, I think they already took delivery on a new ambulance, so a lot of what they were farming out can now be done in-house. Uh, so they'll have three running. Um, when the two are out, the calls would have to go to Oxford or some other uh, ambulance service that would, it covers it at a time when Auburn couldn't handle those service calls. I think their estimated receipts is approximately $800,000. That's what the revenue projections are showing. Uh, but to what extent this 2 million, 2.2 will have on the department is unknown at this time, but whether or not that will impact the number of calls they're able to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
to right. attend I, is, is right. unknown. So that's why. I was why just curious if uh, there had been, and I know, you know, the rail receipts are at least a, what, 90 day mm -hmm. or more lag anyways going on there, so. He has an aged receivable listing, I believe. I think that he had provided That's, to the finance committee was, right. some okay. time ago. Yeah. I'm sure it would. He could update that on the fly, and yeah. you mm -hmm. could have that to you for the next meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, one of the things that startled me when I was listening to the fire chief when he was up here, uh, I mean at the select board, he talked about the rather high number of calls Orbit had as compared to another town, and I was really shocked. Uh, these calls are all within the town of Auburn for Auburn people, or do we go outside of town of Auburn and those highways within Auburn? Hmm? Okay, because he was talking about 3,000 plus calls, and the other one was down in the hundreds someplace. I'm saying, wow. But they have the Mass Pike and 395 and 290 yeah. that, right. that other towns wouldn't have. Yeah. And my last one, well, we, we, did, we did cover the uh, bargaining contract, but when I was looking at that, uh, just for my own understanding, because I missed the meeting, uh, and looking at the budget reports, what, what happened in the parks transferring? In, uh, let's see, FY208, we had transferred... No, let me get this right. Okay, when the budget ended, there was a available funds of $2,900, and then uh, the first run of FY209 had a minus 8623, and then there was an approved transfer of 5951 which I don't know when that was done because it wasn't on the most current. What, what happened here? The balance in 08 was carried into 09 because the retro piece that was paid to the highway was done post June 30th. They needed that balancing difference to meet the contractual obligation of, I think it was 5,000 and change. That came before the Finance Committee. I think we talked about that. Yeah, I've got, I've got both slips in front of me. Yeah. But I, I, don't, I, I, I still don't understand. I actually think the first time it was held because the amount was questioned, then went back to verify it. But um, so there was the retro piece, which may have fallen short of 2,900, in conjunction with the 09 increase, resulted in the transfer of 5,000 to meet both 08 and 09. Well, from the numbers I was looking at, Ed, we we still have a deficit in that line, and I haven't seen the most current run. The run that was as of nine. Nine nine two or nine nine twenty. I'm not sure what it was. We we transferred five thousand nine fifty one, and the previous run we had a deficit of eight thousand six twenty three. So, I'm showing a balance of two hundred twenty seven dollars and sixty four cents. Okay, so that twenty that two thousand nine hundred then has to be added to the fifty nine. Is that what you're saying? That twenty nine hundred it isn't in that number. You have to go to 05. 05. It's tax levy carryover. <laughs> okay. All right. And I'll, I'll look it up right now. Um, <laughs> right here, twenty nine hundred dollars. Yep. Pox labor. We carried that over to meet the 08 obligation. We expended all of that in a portion of the fifty nine. Okay. <laughs> Obviously. All right. Uh, well, that's all I had. Has anybody else got any uh, any questions on any? Yes, you do. Go ahead. Free cash for fiscal year 2008. How did it end up being so high? Local, re yeah, go ahead. Local receipts came at $600,000 higher than projected. Primarily MVE. Um, we had appropriation surpluses, I think, of about 300000 Eddie, could I just ask that you give us some report on it? I, I had asked before, because we used to get reports that backed up the numbers, your, either your sheet or, and when the other guy I'll was. give you the calculation as done by DUR. It's a one sheet. That's fine. Good. I don't think it came. I'll request that of him. But believe me, it's a combination of receivables. It's a combination of... 
yeah. uh, local receipts, actual receipts, it's appropriation surpluses, it's yeah. a mixture of a number of items that Quite honestly, we could all. Is get this what you're talking yeah, about? It's correct. That's it. Yeah, yeah it's okay. uh, just surprising because I thought we were trying to scramble to make sure we could meet the snow and ice deficit. So to have such a large amount of free cash is. The bulk of that is local receipts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why I was saying that yeah. the number went from we get fifty-eight thousand, then one hundred and seventy, then nine hundred and fifty, and five hundred thousand of that went to the. Oh, that's. That's another question. On the treasurer's report that comes out on the trusts, they kept that $500,000, the, I guess they call it the high school, as a separate. Now that's disappeared, and everything goes up in the trust account. How, how are we, how is this money getting out of that trust account? Well, for purposes of reporting, you'd have to ask the treasurer, but I think she's just combining it on the report. There is a separate investment for the 500. And it hasn't disappeared. Okay, so so yeah. you you have a, a little louder, Charlie. <laughs> no, I I I, I, I make people it understand it hasn't disappeared. No, no I, I, I I understand. Well, no, it, I didn't mean it disappeared. It did. It, it went off the off the sheet. But you listen to the school committee. There is so much discussion about fees and expenses and. And that money, that $500,000 came out of us to set up a trust to cover expenses in running the gyms and high schools. To earn an income that would cover the expenses. Yeah, to, to, for income to help, help offset some of the income. But then I said, well, gee, if it's all combined, then we don't know how much was from the prior monies that were in the trust account versus we'd be happy to get a report from the <coughs> treasurer as to the the status of the 500 and i mean that may be just a high profile enough trust that should remain separated out without without speaking for debbie i can't imagine it having been commingled it just has to be well, a report right yeah, just that's, that's, it's that's separate collapsing right. it. yeah okay but, but the, the fund I itself mm -hmm. that's not the intent of setting it up yeah. It has to remain separate and distinct. Right. It is separate and distinct because the interest only on that 500 can be used for the purposes right. of supporting the activity at the gym. Right. Now, just a question of curiosity. Now, if those, if that expense coming, it being incurred, the interest. Let's face it. We all know what the interest is doing right now. It, it's less than nickels and dimes. It's pennies and mills. Um, so if there's additional monies, is that coming direct, would that be coming directly out of the school department's budget? Oh, there could be gifts to that principal. Oh, there could be, yes. And that was allowable in that yeah. trust. But if the interest isn't, isn't there and covering the expenses, it still stays over the school side? Whatever the interest is as of April, right before town meeting, it's put in the Warren article and they're allowed to spend up, okay. mm -hmm. up to that amount of money. Was that in the most recent one? If it was, I missed it. Did yes, it was eleven thousand dollars in change. It was a okay. yield for about I, six yeah, months. I, I do remember that. Okay, uh, as far as um, our next meeting, as far as myself is concerned, December tenth, and I don't know if you folks are going to have a, any chance to do anything before these, if there's any sense of December tenth. Otherwise, I'm not going to be available until. Um, January. January. Well, our uh, budget timeline says, according to this anyways, that we, we'd be getting the capital plan on the 17th. But we still on track for that. I mean, we certainly don't need to meet to get it, but when it's <laughs> available, it'd be great to get it. Well, you could still get it without a meeting. A exactly. That's the point I'm trying to make. So when that's available. I think all depending on the outcome of Monday night's meeting. Kevin, mm -hmm. and the direction we get from the Board of Selectmen is going to determine the timeliness of sure. the CIP because we may okay. have to go back and revisit that. Okay. I know as far as the schedule is concerned, we get December 17th and December 24th. I'm sure no one's interested in meeting on December 24th and then the next. Then. Uh, we, we'll be available. Uh, here. We're going to be here under uh, the star. Here. And the, uh, December, th the under yeah. the December 37, uh, December 31 is is the next one. So I don't think we'll get a so, lot of constructive work done then. 
Um, so, uh, personally, if we're not going to set any date at this moment in time, or do we want to set up? What is the first Wednesday in January? Kevin, you can bring the egg dog. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I, I had a calendar, but I, I have one here. Keeping hydrated. I think we ought to at least set that one up. Uh, the seventh. Seventh. Oh. December, Kevin. January seventh. Mm -hmm. That's the first. Okay. okay. Um, but if the CIP is done, can we get that beforehand? One way or another. Maybe we can pick it up. Yeah, that's. That, yeah, don't yeah, mail. please. Don't uh, mail. We can have the three wise men deliver. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Mo, Kurt, oh, never mind. So. Okay, if there isn't anything else, we'll let you Motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. There so, it is. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.